My message title, you can see, is Heartfelt Thanks. And the passage is Psalm 111, right towards the middle of your Bibles. Psalm 111, I hope you'll turn there. There are some Bibles in the chairs in front of you if you need one. Psalm 111. Let me introduce the message by sharing this uh, story. Alexander Ciaras is a mathematician and a visual artist. He uses special visualization software to explore the unseen human body. In a 2010 TED.com lecture, he explained how his technology has enabled him to scan the development of a baby from conception until birth. Although we hear nothing about his faith or his views on abortion, throughout the lecture, Ciaras refers to what he calls the marvel and the miracle of an unborn baby's development. Ciaras highlights the miracle of life with the following examples. At 44 days, the baby has become something that you can recognize. At nine weeks, it is really like a kind of little human being, he says. At 25 to 28 days, the baby's heart, which resembles a magnificent origami, is developing at a rate of one million cells per second. At 32 days, the arms and hands are developing. Within five weeks, you can start to see the heart's early atrium and ventricles forming. A week later, the baby's heart is actually becoming mature. At 52 days, the retina, the nose, and fingers are developing. By the time the baby is full term, it has 60,000 miles of vessels inside its body, although only one mile of vessels are visible. The other 59,999 miles of vessels are quietly working to bring nutrients and to dispose of waste. Ciaras calls a pregnant woman's body a walking immunological cardiovascular system that can actually nurture and treat this child with the kind of marvel that is beyond our comprehension. Ciaras summarizes his talk by saying this, the complexity of these facts about human development The mathematic models of how these are indeed done are beyond human comprehension. Even though I am a mathematician, I look at this with marvel. How do these instruction sets not make mistakes as they build what is us? It's a mystery, it's magic, it's divinity. It's beyond any comprehension of any existing mathematics today. The psalmist in Psalm 111 says, Great are the works of the Lord. They are studied by all who delight in them. Dear friends, as we approach this Thanksgiving Day this week, what better time to reflect on the character and the works of our great God? Psalm 111, may I read it in our hearing. The psalmist begins, praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with all my heart in the company of the upright and in the assembly. Great are the works of the Lord. They are studied by all who delight in them. Splendid and majestic is his work and his righteousness endures forever. He has made his wonders to be remembered. The Lord The Lord is gracious and compassionate. He has given food to those who fear him. He will remember his covenant forever. He has made known to his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations. The works of his hands are truth and justice. All his precepts are sure. They are upheld forever and ever. They are performed in truth and uprightness. He has sent redemption to his people. He has ordained his covenant forever. 
Holy and awesome is his name. And then the verse that Donna referred to, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all those who do his commandments. His praise endures forever. The Lord's awesome works, his awesome character, call for our heartfelt thanks. Our thanks to the Lord should be wholehearted, the psalmist says. We are commanded to praise the Lord. In fact, praise the Lord, that first line of Psalm 111 is the Hebrew hallelujah. Hallelujah is a command to praise Yahweh, our God. The word praise means to cheer him. It means to brag on him, to extol his name, to glory in God. Yahweh is the covenant name of our God. It's the name of the one true God in all of creation. Yahweh is a term that focuses on his existence. He is I am. I am. He's dependent on no one else, no other God. This name Yahweh refers to his relationship to you and me, his covenant people, the people that he's promised all of eternity to. He uses this name, remember, in Exodus chapter 3, when he's talking to Moses at the burning bush. Exodus three fourteen and 15, we read, God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, thus you shall say to the sons of Israel, I am has sent me to you. God furthermore said to Moses, thus you shall say to the sons of Israel, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever and this is my memorial name to all generations. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's a command to praise him with our breath. Hallelujah marks the beginning and the ending oftentimes of psalms of praise. This is a psalm of praise that is before us in Psalm 111. It's actually an acrostic in the Hebrew Bible. Every line, there are 22 lines in this psalm that match the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet. And each line begins with a succeeding letter of the Hebrew alphabet to the end. It's really an alphabet of praise, reasons to praise him and offer thanks to him. This would have been very helpful as they're encouraging their children to learn the praise and thanks of God. They would be able to memorize this as they went down the Hebrew alphabet thinking of the praise of God. The psalmist reminds us of his own commitment to a wholehearted thanks to God. And I hope that we take this challenge to be committed to giving thanks to the Lord. Notice the psalmist's promise, I will, I will give thanks to the Lord. He's committed to praise him, to confess the name of God in a public way. That's really what this word thanks is all about. It's more than just a thankfulness that I hold inside me. It's a public offering of thanks to the Lord. It's to extol the Lord uh, by way of public confession, confessing his attributes, confessing his power, his works to those around us. He's going to give thanks to the Lord with all, with all my heart, with his inner person. The heart refers to the inner person, our feelings, our thoughts, our will. Uh, with all of me, he's promising to give thanks to the Lord. 
Giving thanks should be offered on many occasions. As I reflected on the importance of giving thanks, I just did a little survey of reasons to give thanks to God in Scripture. We're to give thanks to God for His character and His works, as we see here in Psalm 111. We're to give thanks for one another in the body of Christ, we read in the New Testament. We're to give thanks for all things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we read. We're to give thanks for our eternal inheritance. Wow, this life is not all there is. Eternity lies before us. It's a reason to give thanks. We're to give thanks for our daily food, we read in Scripture. We're to give thanks instead of silly talk or coarse jesting, Thankfulness should be on our lips. We're to give thanks for the grace that's spreading to more and more people, we read in the New Testament. We're to give thanks, Paul says in 2 Corinthians 9, for the indescribable gift that we've been given in the person of Jesus. We're to give thanks, Paul says, because it's God's will for you to give thanks We're to give thanks while we have life and breath before we go to the grave when physically in this world we'll no longer be able to offer thanks, though for believers we'll give thanks uh, in His presence in heaven. We're to give thanks for His word that we've been given. We're to give thanks for answered prayer. We're to give thanks for being fearfully and wonderfully made. As we saw this slide of this uh, baby inside the womb, fearfully and wonderfully made. We're to give thanks to him forever, we read in Scripture. The psalmist is going to give thanks in the company of the upright uh, and in the assembly. The company of the upright refers to a smaller circle of people. So I envision this as being my family, the people I work with, uh, my neighborhood, uh, my grocery store, wherever it is that I find myself on a regular basis, I'm to give thanks in the company, that smaller company of the upright, that intimate group. The psalmist is promising to do that with that intimate group around himself. But he's also going to give thanks in the assembly. The assembly refers to the larger congregation of people. So we need to be characterized by thankfulness in those intimate gatherings. Perhaps you'll have one of those on Thanksgiving Day, an opportunity to give thanks to the Lord with family and loved ones. But we're also to be thankful in public gatherings as we're gathered here today or in other larger groups to be bold, to be uh, speaking out our thanks to God. Praise and thanks to God should be evident in our lives from day to day. We're to be thankful with our whole heart and in every place, small group, work, home, neighborhood, in all of our gatherings. The Lord's awesome works call for heartfelt thanks. Our thanks to the Lord spring from His works. And in these 22 lines, beginning with each of the succeeding letters of the Hebrew alphabet, the psalmist gives great reasons to praise and thank the Lord. Notice he says in verse 2, great are the works of the Lord. And he uses that familiar Hebrew word. Remember when we were studying Jonah, the prophet Jonah? Jonah was swallowed by, what was he called in Hebrew? In Hebrew, the words were dog gadol. And gadol is used here. Uh, It was a great fish that swallowed Jonah, but now the psalmist is talking about the great works of the Lord. This word gadol in Hebrew, the word great, refers to the upper range on a scale of extent. 
God's works are really off the chart as being great. Great, and we need to praise and thank him for these great works. They are studied, the psalmist says, by all who delight in them. What a challenge to me and to you to study the works of God, to ponder them, to seek them out, to meditate on the works of God, to think about them seriously and at length concerning their meaning and their meaning to me as an individual. They're studied by all who delight in them. I wonder, do you find yourself delighting in the character and in the works of God? To delight means to take pleasure in something. It means to be eagerly fond of something, to have an affection for something. Sometimes that's easy to dull or dim in our lives as being Christians perhaps for decades as I have been. Sometimes uh, the thankfulness and the praise tends to, to dull a little bit over time. But I need to delight, to take pleasure, to be eagerly fond of the works of God. The Lord's works are remembered by the psalmist in verses 3 through 9. His works are splendid and majestic. That is, they are glorious. They are beautiful and instill awe in the psalmist. He says his righteousness endures forever. That is, the Lord is forever right, forever just. He is unchanging in his holy character. The psalmist says that his wonders will be remembered His amazing deeds will be remembered throughout eternity. Remembered is a word that means to be celebrated, and actually it's a word of worship as well. Uh, As we remember the works of the Lord, celebration and worship are a part of that memory. The psalmist remembers the Lord's character and works. He says, The Lord is gracious. That means he's merciful to the needy and to those who repent. He is compassionate, which means he shows favor when punishment is really what we deserve. He is one who gives food to those who reverence him. Uh, Jim has brought the challenge of those who need food even in our community and the Lord through his people Blessing those around us. He gives food to those who reverence him. He will remember his covenant forever. What a wonderful truth that is. Psalm 105 verses 8 through 11 is a good passage to turn to to think of his covenant lasting forever. The psalmist says that he's made known the power of his works. He's made known the supernatural and miraculous power displayed through his works. And as evidence of his power, he gave his people the promised land as their inheritance. We see in verse 6, overthrowing the nations, giving the inheritance as he promised his people. The works of his hands in verse 7, we see our truth. That is, they are faithful, they're reliable, he is trustworthy. And his work of his hands are also justice. He judges with fairness. All his precepts are sure, the psalmist says. Precepts refers to his instructions to his people. They are true. They are verified and reliable. His precepts are also upheld forever and ever, according to verse 8. They are performed in truth and uprightness. And then we see in verse 9 that he has sent redemption to his people. What is redemption? Redemption is the paying of a price for the release of someone from captivity. Do you remember Peter's words in 1 Peter 1, verses 18 and 19? Peter says, Knowing that you were not redeemed 
with perishable things like silver or gold from your futile way of life inherited from your forefathers, but with precious blood as of a lamb, unblemished and spotless, the blood of Christ. The psalmist says that God has ordained his covenant forever. He's going to keep his promises throughout eternity to us. His name is holy. It is unique. It's completely set apart from sin. It is divine. And his name is awesome. It's to be revered and to be venerated. The psalmist reminds us of the value of studying and delighting in the character of his works. At this Thanksgiving season, but not just now, but each day through the year, let's remember If I can get the slide to change, the Lord's awesome works call for our heartfelt thanks. And then briefly from verse 10, our thanks to the Lord should lead to reverence for him. Remember verse 10, the psalmist says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all those who do his commandments. His praise endures forever. The psalmist concludes this psalm of praise and thanks with the motto of the wisdom teachers of the Hebrews. And that wisdom motto is that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Reverence for God is expressed in submitting to his will, in being an obedient son, an obedient daughter. Wisdom is a word in the Hebrew text that refers to the capacity to understand and to have skill in living uh, according to a set standard that God has given us. Remember Solomon at the end of his Ecclesiastes, in Ecclesiastes 12.13, Solomon said the conclusion when all has been heard is Fear God and keep his commandments because this applies to every person. A wise person is one who has a personal relationship with the Lord, who's committed to obeying his word. At this Thanksgiving and each day through the year, let's remember the importance of heartfelt thanks toward the Lord. I have one application. I think it's a good application. I hope that you'll take it to heart. And that is, as the psalmist has done in Psalm 111, come up with a, an alphabet of praise and thanks. For us, it's going to be A through Z, unless you want to use Hebrew Aleph through Tav. Uh, please use A through Z. But This would be a practical exercise to remember how much we have to be thankful for, how much we need to praise him for the goodness he's shown us. Would you take on that assignment? Just write out A through Z. You might have trouble with Z. Uh, You might have trouble with Q. But work at it and come up with an alphabet of praise. I'd like to conclude with a a quote from Andrew Murray, a man of God in a past generation. He writes these words in his book, With Christ and the School of Obedience. Andrew Murray said, "The The true pupil, say, of some great musician or painter, uh, yields his master a wholehearted and unhesitating submission. In practicing his scales or mixing the colors, in the slow and patient study of the elements of his art, he knows that it is wisdom simply and fully to obey. It is this wholehearted surrender to his guidance, this implicit submission to his authority, 
which Christ asks. We come to him asking him to teach us the lost art of obeying God as he did. The only way of learning to do a thing is to do it. The only way of learning obedience from Christ is to give up your will to him and to make the doing of his will the one desire and delight of your heart. So the starting point is in becoming wise is reverence for the Lord. And those who do his word have a good understanding and will praise his name forever. The Lord's awesome works call for our heartfelt thanks. Thanks.